up guys? Grant Milbury here, New England Reptile Distributors. This is our monitor room. We have Ian here picking up some serious Fuego. Uh, stuff that most people can't afford, but uh, maybe if they work as hard as he did, they'll get where he is right now. These are our baby and raise up cages here in the monitor room. Everyone that wants to put animals into fish tanks that are gigantic, this is how you're supposed to do it. You gotta clean the water every day. You gotta put a lot of time and effort into these animals. They are not the low end species that you'll find in pet stores. They're not bearded dragons. You have to be very particular and clean. They may like filth, they may eat rotten stuff, but they don't want to eat rotten stuff. They don't want to live in filth. We want to give them the best lives they can, and they will reward us with eggs, which will bring us a bunch of wonderful captive bred babies that come out of the egg pretty happy. With a little bit of socialization, they get used to us, and they become as tame as a dog or a cat or anything, and they're much smarter than both dogs and cats, if you ask me. But Definitely. These guys are wonderful, and they will continue to be more tractable as time goes on. And uh, then, after you've got there, if you got the right success, you'll get to uh, something like this. You'll get to a nice enclosure that size. These are, we breed in these enclosures. The animals are happy. They're psychologically sound. It is not a detriment to their well-being being in a cage this size. It actually is better being tighter and more calm than those big giant cages. The big giant cages are more for us. Whereas these are for them. I mean, it's not the best thing to look at, but it definitely works. And what kind is this? Is that a... That one's one of the new... Um, I think it's ivory. I'm I was going to say, that looks that's like an a, ivory. That's a teen egg, and then we have the albino celebensis. So the albino celebensis, I think we were calling ivory at one point, but it's a very, very white it, water monitor. We still is it grab it? Or? Exactly. Uh, I don't know what's going on with with her right now we did put a boy in there okay um, i was gonna see if you get it out but we'll see i, I mean i'll take her out you want to see her yeah see yeah her i out. definitely want to see the ivory water monitor <laughs> definitely take her out look at her hey girl she's an amazing animal <laughs> how are you doing she's very nice she's got a little bump on her chin right here probably from her being a little crazy during a feeding or something like that but they're a very, very strong animal. Love it. They definitely can uh, take a lot of abuse in the wild. Luckily around here, they don't have to deal with any of that stuff. So you'll see a really beautiful animal. So what, was she imported her. or? She is an import for sure, 100%. Heck yeah, and yep. already social. Yep, it's just, it. socialization, obviously there's all those tricks and things that we like to talk about in the videos, but it's really just giving the animal respect uh, not grabbing it by the head, letting it know that you're not a threat. Um, the second it, it feels nervous, if you say, like, you know, hey, what's up, what's going on? You look at its eyes, you actually talk to it, you give it the respect that it's a being that can understand. It might not understand English, but it definitely understands a level of respect. And you'll get what you give when it comes to these guys, especially, especially, especially the croc monitors. Croc monitors are extremely intelligent, and if you disrespect a croc monitor, hi buddy, it's me, not food. If you disrespect a croc monitor, they will mess you up. But if you love, no, 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 it's me. If you disrespect a croc monitor, they will mess you up. <clears throat> and they go into feeding frenzy sometimes, so you got to be careful with that. But when you give them respect. And you give them time to think, you see their pupils changing, you see them looking. He's not jumping to try and do something. A lot of people get nervous because they do kind of jump around like birds, but they're nice. That's my They know the difference. <laughs> they know the Heck difference. Yeah. And yes, hi. Hi. Yes, it's me. See how his eyes doing that? It's getting smaller, bigger, dilating. He's thinking. Hi. Yes, it's me. No food. I have no food for you. Just hands. But yeah, so as long as you give the animals respect, um, these originally did come in as uh, farmed babies, and it's a little bit easier, but you can get ones this size out of the wild and give them respect, and within a week, 
They're going to be pretty easy to work with as long as you give them respect. You, you mess with them, they're going to mess with you, and they can do serious damage. So the big thing with monitors is respect because they're very, very intelligent. If you bring them water, bring them food, they're going to recognize that. They recognize different people. Once they punk someone out, they'll always remember that that guy got punked out. Gotcha. Um, and then they see someone like me walk in and they're like, all right, all right, all right, we'll <laughs> chill now. <laughs> so they know. Um, we have another cell of Benzis in here. She can be a jerk sometimes, so we'll let you just film in there before she causes hey chaos. But that's like what a cell of Benzis looks like, which is why that one's so, so white. Because it's, it's basically a black monitor with just speckling. Mm -hmm. Almost like the... Uh, you know, the Jampeyas, the Sulawesis, the ones that they used to call patternless. Um, same type of stuff. And then uh, more croc monitors. Nice chill croc monitors. Huh, baby girl? Baby girl. You a good girl? Are you a good girl? So have you found them to be, when, you know, captive born, more... Adapted uh, to socialization? Born, captive born definitely is better because they learn all these behaviors and traits right from early the... on in life. Whereas when they're from the wild, we have to, you know, convince them a little, little harder uh, that we're good people. Especially if they dealt with an importer that kind of just grabbed them up. Or if they were caught on one of those big fish hooks that they like mm -hmm. to do when they're hunting. Um, it all depends on the psychology of the animal and some animals get ruined beyond repair where their psychology is wrecked and they're just never going to trust another human ever Sounds in their familiar. life. I really like um, how you guys did these caging. Well, we, do, um, we do as best as we can with working with those ones that are aggressive and we don't discard them. We don't say, all right, this one's an asshole. Get rid of her. Um, we have one in the other room. I'll show you. That's called Wretched Social. Yeah, Day. I kind of just went through so, that. Um, right here, we've got some breeding activity. Actually, if you want to get that. Yeah, the lacies, I think. That's okay, a that's a tea yeah, yeah. So we're gonna take we're gonna take the yellow away. Yeah. Obviously, when you hear A in front of something, it means lacking. So A xanthic is gonna take all that xanthin, and then we've already taken away all the melanin. That is Awesome yeah, pairing be right there. Pretty ridiculous animal. That is I'm more awesome. excited about give the you black guys some privacy. Tea paws, because black dragon tea paws is going to give us a purple lizard. All right, I'm going to give this a uh, break. <laughs> yep. Thank you, Grant. Well, thanks for coming. Thanks for putting me out into the world to uh, see that I'm not a moron and I actually know what I'm doing. <laughs> Definitely. <And laughs> thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. Anna over there, Hi. Matt. Super exciting day. Yep. Check this guy out, everybody. This is Kevin's T negative line. Thor. Thor. Yes, that's his name. Uh, he don't want to be on camera today. That's all right, buddy. Oh, here he comes. Yeah, he does. Come on. This is the original T neg line. Here, a nerd. We have one of his dis offspring, or one of his descendants. Yeah, I believe it's directly. So at least from his bloodline. He is awesome. I love him. He was actually an import. Uh, Captain Safety from a purse skin factory. Trade. A yeah, skin trade. Yeah, like right they, he was trade. ready to be chopped up and. Made into a purse overseas somewhere. Mm -hmm. Kevin definitely took him in and, you know, gave us a whole new, saved his life, gave us a whole new line of monitors here in the United States. It's awesome. Good boy, Tor. <laughs> How are you doing? He's like, all right, that's enough pets for one day. Like, all right, I guess I'll get up and go take a bath, get some <laughs> water. I'm not doing a lot of buddy. Buddies always just like, This no, is just, this alone. isn't scarring or anything. That's just, you know, shed that. 
either becomes dirty from burrowing in the in the substrate. You know, monitors are crazy creatures that like to like to make messes, huh, bud? Oh yeah, isn't that nice? Now see that? That's well. Okay. He's going to show you guys this hemi beam that he just popped out for us, but scratching himself like a dog. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, bud? He is awesome. He's a good boy. Yes, he is. He's a good boy. Oh, oh, look at them. Yeah, and now them. these are... Those are T-Paws cross T-Paws. Yes. Okay, so baby T-positives. Uh, yep. Straight right. out of the egg, getting good look experiences. Look at them little guys. I got myself Setting them on the right page of the socialization. Always, How are you doing? That one has this little umbilical yeah. still hanging. Yeah. So we leave them in there until they suck all that up. <clears> and <throat> how many days? How do like the double boil. How many days is it for the water monitors you figure Six out? Six to seven months. Six to seven months. It just depends what my temperature. That incubator's running 84 right now. That's where I dropped mine too. But well, when I, I was at like 86, I was getting like 195 days or so. He's getting his females to cycle every other month, not waiting four months. Who? He is. Argus? No, his water Argus. monitors. I don't know if that's a good thing. No, no, good. Every, no, dude, that's what it is. That's is the it cycle. every month? Every, oh, no, Dustin every month and a half. Uh, yeah, no, every it's month every, and a half. No, it's every month and a half. No, and, then, cool. and then, if you wouldn't mind telling my audience, like, what all you had to go through to bring, <laughs> bring the T negatives and make them available here in the United States. I had to go like through well, the process of, like... Getting the... When we first got the first import, which was... So there's different types of teen eggs. There's a type one and a type two, and then there's T positive. And I had to play the whole game with all of them. And I'm breeding stuff together and hatching normals, you know, breeding a teen egg to a normal, raising up all the resulting babies, try to put it back with the original dad who was a Sumatran line. And he was like 72, 75 pounds and he destroyed them. So then I got another T negative male. I bred that T negative male to these hats, nothing. Because the original one was a T type, type one. one. Then I got in another albino female, and it turns out it was a T positive female. And I was playing all these different games and eventually breeding all this stuff together and the sun started hitting. So I make T, T uh, negative type ones, and then I make the T negative type two, which are like, you know, the really the bubble gum ones like these. Like right? these. Yeah, those. And it, this is what my line is coming yeah, from yeah 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 the bubble gummy ones because the t mm -hmm. the t uh negative type ones we just make those those are mixed into all my t positive stuff so you can breed a t positive to a uh, t negative type two and you'll make visual corals but if you breed a t negative type one to a caramel you make normals and that is where i was losing my mind and that that when i started doing that and i wasn't hatching out stuff I kind of threw my hands up in the air and I'm like, I don't understand what's going on because the wild ones, T positives and T negatives, when they're big, they look the same. They will a lot look of the them. same. They yeah. will. Yeah. Yeah. People, I was looking yeah. at one of your T positives. I was like, is that T negative? Yeah. Like, no, that's T positive. I yeah. Had to call my oh yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. It, like little T positive. So as they're growing, they're not gaining melanin. So as they're growing, the melanin is getting stretched. They don't create more melanin. So eventually they have the T negative look when they're, they're big yeah, and nice. all that. And a lot of my stuff is small bloodlines. Except for the eyes. That's really how you can kind of tell a little. I can still probably screw you up on a couple. Yeah. But it might be a little bit more vibrant-y. Um, but there's some really good T-positives out there. Like, I've made some that are just pretty silly. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's. Yeah, this. I love this one. This one is just. Look at the colors on that. It's just insane. Yeah. <laughs> But also about like the marketing, like, you know, why these are so expensive. If you knew how much money this. <laughs> oh, yeah. This everything costs. They cost so much, so much money. So now if 
you want to source like T negatives, there's only one guy who, Danny Gorman, who's wonderful, mm -hmm. and he has beautiful stuff. But other, other than that, it's all wild caught. Problem is, when you're getting a wild caught T negative water monitor, now you've got all sorts of the different disease things and all mm -hmm. this weird stuff. Yeah. I have T negatives that I've got, I've landed, and a week later, they, within a week, they die. So, and it's like goodbye, fourteen thousand dollars. That's gonna be super yeah. frustrating. <laughs> yeah, because even the I wild mean, cots, like I seen the direct import price for a pair, twenty three k. Like, and that's you yeah. know, oh, you're, you're, and that's new age. Like when back when he started doing it, it was even more. Yeah, so I got my so, albino salivensis. I got two of my albino salivensis within days of having them. They're both sick, and I struggled and struggled and struggled medicating, and one of them died. So one of them probably cost me $28,000. Hmm. It's the one that I have. It, so he it, paid. It's, it's heartbreaking. No, Captive is, is absolutely. He's the one that started it all over here in the States for us to have these guys. So. Yeah. They're, they're pretty awesome. And then, of course, all thanks, the different. Now we're doing other Kevin stuff. Like early. you have like uh, Samarensis or Coming Eye and all that kind of yeah, stuff. I love them. I, so. I'm doing some Bawas because I could not yeah. get some Bawas to. I get them in and they were like, by the time I got them, they were like dying. They're all sick and, and horrible. They get a really, they call it um, the zombie disease. And yeah, some Bawas. It, it's terrible. They'll shut their eyes, they bleed from the mouth, and they'll just walk around with their eyes shut, And but they all die. Mm -hmm. So it took me a lot of Sambawas, and I was getting, I was spending high, high money for really good looking Sambawas. So I got the Sambawas, and a lot, you know, wasn't getting it to work, but then finally I did the first breedings of them. So now I have captive stuff, and I'm raising all my captive stuff, but my Sambawas are amazing looking compared to like the, the typical Sambawas. That you could get it was so i'm i'm really into some bowers. i love some bowers. Oh, i can tell <laughs> yeah they're, they're so cool they change so much and the good you know it was they were just so hard it's hard to establish getting them to establish getting actually i have to get little ones and a couple lived and i was able to raise them and then breed them and and they you know breed true smaller growing don't lay a lot of eggs they are not as reproductive as let's say a java or it's whatever Zimbabwe's. yeah or Zimbabwe's. Zimbabwe's. and i have you know my azantic stuff uh we, we hatched the first you know Azan you know captive azantics and stuff like that so i'm breeding the azantics into my other stuff i really love the azantic stuff too it's something that like you said uh over here wasn't getting a lot of attention. I sent, I sent some like, over. So. I sent some over to the UK now, so yeah. I have some of my stuff over there now to get him situated, so he can actually. Right now, he could actually breed probably Azantix together right now if he wanted to. It's awesome. But yeah, so thanks for having us out, Kevin. It's been awesome, oh, sure. and you got a great facility here. Definitely uh, uh, gives me some some high inspirations and high hopes on my end to, to do a little more. It's, it's